almost midnight. But you know we're going to be up in the morning. Midnight. On that grind, Chris. We chase a gold buckle. What are you smoking, dude? But it might as well be midnight. Oh, sure. <laughs> Check, one, check, 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 check. First video, um, we are excited. I'm super excited to have Kingston here with First me. Crash dummy. Yeah, crash dummy, I guess, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then there'll be a second and third until we get it down. But anyways, we're gonna have we're gonna have a good time right here. Uh, we're gonna be pretty lax and we're gonna go into you know a little bit of detail about how we met and some rodeo memory and stuff. So. I hope that you guys, I hope they enjoy it because so. uh, Chang and I, we're good friends. We've known each other since 21. 21. 21. Yep. We uh, ventured off and we hit some circuit radios and stuff with his partner, uh, Ryan Bowright at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, good friends. I call him, he calls me, we talk all the time. I was like, the other night we were headed to Garden City uh, for the college radio. And we, he talked to me till 2 a.m. till I got there. But I mean, we just get on the phone and it just rolls and it just goes so smooth. and. And the reason I actually wanted him on here is because when we get on the phone, like I said, it's so easy. We just crack up laughing and we just relive all of our old memories that we had at first year rodeo. And so hope you guys enjoy this. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Kingston's from Dodge City now, but he wasn't always from Dodge City. My man is from Hawaii. So, you know, I'm touching like, you know, how it was in Hawaii and yeah. you know, how you got yeah. over here and whatnot. So born and raised in Maui, Hawaii. Uh, grew up. Riding, roping a little bit. Uh, my dad roped some when I was a kid. Started there, junior rodeoing. Did the whole whole deal. Uh, did a little bit of the, everybody thinks everybody in Hawaii surfs all the time. And did a little bit of the beach stuff, but not really. And Did they, you ever get on the, on the surfboard? Oh, yeah. Was it fun? Was it hard? It. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. For sure, and what people, most people don't realize is how huge the waves can be. Like it's it's a large, a small wave is a <laughs> enormous body of water. And that's where, it, it can be intimidating, but no, I've never been any sort of surfer or anything, but sure, we, we did go to the beach some and all that, but more or less did a lot of hunting, you know, very little fishing. Fish. fishing. A little bit day. of fishing. We love it every day. Yeah, well, I always love it every day for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, they, wrote a, they wrote a song about that, didn't they? Yeah, just something for me. like that. Just, just for me. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, now, you know, interesting part about hunting in Hawaii is it's year round for everything except for pheasants. You have so, pheasants in Hawaii? Yeah, you have pheasants. Yeah, well, they, they fly across the ocean? <laughs> no. <laughs> they got brought in like everything else. <laughs> but uh, no, they, uh, the deer population is has been like out of control really and yeah and and you there's no tags there's no all you need is permission from the landowner so yeah. it's like shooting a skunk over here it's like coyotes like coyotes yeah like really? shooting coyotes, except for so you see do you ever see any deer on the beach in the oh sand? sure yeah. really? not like on the sand i mean there's usually enough people there right but they'll be you can see them i mean they'll be right there yeah i got it uh, a friend that we met a long time ago, he's from Hawaii, and he hunts hogs yeah. with a chihuahua. Oh, I don't know about that. I've seen videos. I we did not believe it. You got to show Did not this. believe it. I have, we'll have to reach out to him. What is the it. chihuahua doing? Barking. You know, yeah, I was going to say, because <laughs> he ain't doing my tail. <laughs> yeah. But I say, yeah. honey, the yeah. chihuahua is chasing him. I'm sure he's yeah. behind, you know, well, I'm sure there's, and whatnot. I'm sure but. there's a <clears throat> handful of pit bulls leading him back, <laughs> yeah. and the chihuahua making the most noise, but yeah. So yeah, that's another one you can hunt all you want. No tags, no, no nothing. Just need permission and dogs. And you well, what were their like rodeos and jackpots like? Did they have a surplus of them at any point Man, in the year? Or? Not, not a ton. Gotten more since I've left. Yeah. You know, you're talking. I left. I graduated high school in 2005, so I've been up here since really then. Really told on yourself, right there. Yeah, well, really told on yourself. So, but before then. It was pretty, it was gaining, but it wasn't quite there yet. There was maybe a rodeo, maybe once a month, maybe a little bit more. Uh, jackpot, about the same. Um, but, uh, no, I mean. You know, I was actually in Salinas, California last year. Yeah. And um, I had run into a, to this, this one guy. I said, yeah, he's probably 16 years old. Yeah. And um, 
I was saying, uh, you know, where are you from? He's like, man, I'm from Hawaii. Yeah. I'm like, no way. I've got a friend from Hawaii. Yeah. And I told him your name, and then I guess his dad knows you uh, fairly well. Yeah. Brother. I forget. Yeah. I Kelly, forget his name. Kelly Medeiros probably, I think, is who you were. Maybe living in Arizona now? Yeah, you're roping a dummy with him. I remember seeing then you. I, then I sent you some video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that, he ropes pig really well. Yeah. Uh, he plays yeah. pig really well. He oh, be, kid ropes good, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know him all that well, but Dak said they were, he was, the kid was pretty young when I left. Right. Yeah, no. They're everywhere. There's swines all over the place. People don't see them or don't know a lot of times that where they're from, but they're, there's a lot more on the West Coast, but there's, there's Hawaii people everywhere. And yeah. There's, it's rodeo is a lot bigger there than probably what most people think, um, just because I don't know. The first thing you think about Hawaii, you don't think about rodeo. Oh yeah, you think about beaches yeah, and Pearl Harbor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, drinking mai tais on the beach. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. But well, you know. tell us a little bit how you like. How did you? How was a uh, Oklahoma an option? Garden or I mean, like, Dodge Oklahoma, City. Dodge City an option. So, um, and how long have you been in? Uh, been in Dodge since 2005. 2005. Yep. So you, as soon as you graduated, went you went straight like, to college. Yep. See ya. Yep. Went did a rodeo scholarship to Dodge and. Um, Who was it? Was the same guy your rodeo coach is now? No. 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 When I when I was first came, Randy Mitchell was the coach for a year, and then Kent Crouch took over, and was a coach. And he's at, Kent is actually a PRCA judge, Judge San Antonio. Uh, Big timer. Yeah, no, he's yeah, he's, yeah, he's good, um, and I still talk to him till this day. We're still friends. He wasn't the one that was on the horse flagging the team rope, was he? No, he wasn't. Okay, no, good. He was on the seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he wasn't flagging the team rope. He wasn't calling the cross country. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we're gonna clarify. You're welcome, Kent. Yeah. <laughs> he got you. He got uh, you he's good. gonna watch this. I guarantee you. Yeah, no, you're good, Kent. We like good judges, Kent. Yeah, we like them on our side. <laughs> But yeah, and he was my coach and uh, learned a lot from him. He was good. Um, then, uh, but how I got there, um, my uncle actually moved there in uh, 93. He graduated high school. And there was a friend of a friend that sold some cattle to some people up there to, from a ranch in Hawaii. And my uncle and them needed horses for Cheyenne's high school finals, the, the high school finals, which was in Gillette, Wyoming, not Cheyenne, I'm sorry, Gillette, Wyoming, and uh, they needed horses. So they got in touch with a friend of a friend and contacted a guy named Leighton Gleason, who run the Winter's Ranch there north of Cimarron, Calvesta. And anyways, they flew in and used his horse, worked with him on the ranch for, I don't know, maybe 30 days, and then practiced on horses and went to Gillette and uh, rode the horse at the high school finals. And then <clears throat> I guess in the mix of all that, knowing they were gonna be in Dodge City or close to, you know, Cimarron's 20 miles from Dodge City, knowing they were gonna be close to, then they went ahead and just uh, uh, applied for a rodeo scholarship there at Dodge City and got in. And, uh, and at that time, my uncle was a bull rider. And at that time, Dodge City was a pretty big bull riding school, so. Were you a bull rider? I well, no, I got on a few, you got on a few calves and steers, but and I've been on two two bulls or one bull two times. One bull two. One times. bull two times. Short lived. The first time, he came up. My brother will love this. He I can still see him. He's laughing. <laughs> uh, it was just three of us. I don't know what I wanted to try. It was in high school, so it was three of us went up there. My brother and another buddy of mine, and went up there. And the buddy pulled my rope and then jumped over and cracked the gate. My brother pulled the latch. And the first time he came out backwards and I never left the seat. I've rolled off of him and I was lying in the seat and I was so pissed off and I told him, bring him back. We're gonna, I, there's no way that's gonna be my, my one and done bull ride. So we brought him back and I got on him and I made it past the gate, but that wasn't much more. And he clicked my heels and flipped me over and I can still remember standing up on all fours and looking at the chutes and my brother just bellied over just rolling didn't even make sure you got right. no did not care <laughs> didn't matter he, he was laughing well, you're gonna get up or you weren't yeah you well, do, right? well, what was he gonna do tell me if <laughs> right, i was hurt right. so i might as well laugh but yeah oh, man too bad there wasn't like snapchat back in the day huh no, there wasn't. oh yeah because even our phones or something get famous you no know, even our phones didn't record so even oh, if yeah. you had a cell phone you couldn't record you could barely take a blurry picture at at when I was in high school. So you can like send selfies to a girl or something. You, you had to do everything in person back then. Uh, yeah, you had to man up. Man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Different. Yeah, for sure. And times have changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I ended up Dodge and just never left. Left periodically, but always end up back there. So gotcha. for some reason or another. So we've kind of talked before about, uh, you know, what was like your childhood, and we've kind of mm -hmm. got into some things, you know, like how, how I was brought up, and, you know, people see us how we are now, but they didn't really know us, sure. you know, when we were little and stuff, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the hard times that we had and whatnot, and, you know, kudos to my parents, they never, they never let us know it was hard times, you yeah. know, they never, ever, you know, so I never knew that, so yeah. I, I, I appreciate them a whole bunch for that, but, um, about you, I know we've talked a little bit um, about your childhood and stuff, so you yeah. want to kind of touch on that with you? Yeah, man, we, like I said, grew up there in Hawaii and roped a little bit. My dad roped some, and man, I was about, I was not about, I was 11 years old. And and, uh, and living life and rich and had all the money. Was good, I had, had two or three horses, truck and trailer, <laughs> had a set of roping steers. I mean, never, never, never knew much else. And uh, at this time, my dad had remarried. Um, my mom, I never really, oh, whatever. I don't want to say didn't know her, but never had a lot to do with her. Um, had some issues, this and that. And I think she's over now. She's good now. Um, but still just don't have a lot of contact there. But um, so my dad pretty well raised me till I was 11. And then I was sitting at home on, on Wednesday afternoon, and uh, the, I see about seven, six or seven blacked out cars uh, come rolling in, all like screeching tires and the whole deal. And, and uh, they step out, and they're in bulletproof vest, and they got guns on, and they've got FBI written across their chest. It's kind of like a scene of a movie. It's like, it's a, it was a scene of a movie. Just sitting there eating chips and salsa <laughs> on the front table. You remember exactly what I you remember doing. exactly, yeah. It was a Wednesday, because uh, we always got out of school early at 1.15 on Wednesdays, and uh, caught the bus ride home from work, or from school, I'm sorry. And sitting there eating chips and salsa, talking to my buddy Jordan Silva on the phone, and they all start rolling in. And uh, said, bulletproof vest, FBI, the whole deal, and uh, so I walked to the front door. And Did they knock, or were they like? Oh, well, it was a big slide glass, so you could see. Big slide glass, you could see right through the garage. You could see right into the driveway, and you, they're just everywhere. And uh, they're just walking up, guns drawn, not pointing at me. At this time, I didn't know they already had my dad. So I, but I don't know what they're doing. But uh, so they weren't real pressed to. You know, like they weren't thinking he was in the house. Right, so so right. they were kind of casually walked. So it wasn't like everybody get down. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't yeah. none of that. They, they, were, they were pretty respectful. And, and he just walked up to the door, slid the door open. And and I'm just standing there like a deer in the headlights, you know. And he said, are you the only one home? I said, yeah, I am. And he said, okay. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you you kind of ruined my phone call, man. <laughs> Well, you step outside for them. Is there any weapons in the house? And they start. To it wasn't raining, though, was it? They didn't no. make sense of rain. No, it was no, no. no. <laughs> no it was good. I stood, it was raining that day. Just, I was you know. the, I just stood in the garage. And, man, they all came filing in, and uh, wasn't long after that somebody had called my grandma. My grandma came and picked me up from there and took me out of there, and they searched the house up and down. And so, what had happened was, my dad was a drug dealer selling cocaine and meth and Lord knows what else. And uh, he got set up in an FBI sting on a different island, mm. uh, Oahu. And uh, um, like I said, just, just had a, he went to California several times, did like met with these guys and these guys are supposed to be in the drug cartels, you know, out of Mexico. and. We'll, we'll get the we'll get the dope in Hawaii and all that and, and you uh, you pedal it for us and the whole deal. And Turns out it's from UC. Yeah, FBI. It was, yeah, it was FBI the whole time had everything <laughs> under under cover or under uh, videotape and surveillance and recorded and the whole deal. And uh, but no, he he was never a user. Uh, he just a businessman. He always sold and he always he always preached to us uh, growing up. To this day, I've never 
touch drugs at, at all. Never tried them. Never had no want to. He always, uh, he always, uh, he'd really instill how bad it was for you. Ironically, <laughs> you know, I mean, it is ironic, but he knew how bad it was for you. And then he always, you know, pushed that towards us. Like, you know, I mean, he'd, there'd be somebody, you know, you can tell he's drugged out, cracked out walking down the road and be like, you want to look like him? Let's do drugs. <laughs> and it, it just, he always would do that. And it made, made me like scared you to death of it. And of course, knowing that some of my genetics have addictive quality, you know, right, right. addictive personalities. I don't know how much of that. I know I got some of them because uh, you put some chocolate peanut butter cups in front of me and, uh, and uh, I know I got some addictive uh, stuff there, but uh, so I thought, man, if you never try it and you never know what it feels like, it. just stay away because, because uh, not, not a good deal. So, so uh, that, was yeah, that was that. But so my, so my grandma came, picked me up, took me home, spent the night with her and uh, man, cried my eyes out all night that night. Just, it hit me, you know, Right. couldn't sleep, was up all night. But yeah, did you, being, being at 11 years old, like, did you actually, like, understand? I knew he was or, selling you, drugs. You, so you knew? I knew he was. He didn't, he wasn't working. Right. He had money. <laughs> I mean, it don't take a rocket scientist, you right. know? I mean, so I knew he was. He never did it in front of me. I mean, I knew he wasn't doing it in front right. of me at all. But I I knew. I mean, I I, I could tell. Put, the, put two and two together, mm. you know, and uh, go from there. And, but, no, I... My grandma, she took me home that night, and uh, like I said, I didn't sleep a wink. It was hard. And went to school the next day. Did you sleep with your grandma that night? At her, not with her. Not with her. Not I'd say like, I'd have been all. I'd have been hugging my grandma. No, so no, we were, we're the, it was, it was a little harder than that. I mean, it's like, oh, there's the couch. Really? And uh, see you in the morning. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, okay. And uh, sure enough, just sent me to school the next morning. Of course, am not in the best state of mind right grumpy pissed off of course well you know first first guy says the first thing wrong to me next thing you know we're in a fight suspended from school with and so we go home and it sucks because the guy i got in a fight with he's like one of the coolest guys now you know like we we probably way cool now you want to get punched in the mouth well <laughs> I know, you know? i'm sure you could probably take me now but <laughs> but uh back then like now, I mean, if when I go back home and stuff, he's one of the nicest guys, you know, just always go. I would be too, you know, uh, learn today. <laughs> but, uh, no, so did that, and then, but, um, in the midst of all that, um, stepmom took the horses and stuff and sold them, sold everything. And I, I'm not sure if she had lawyer bills or what she had, to, I'm not sure what was going on, but took everything, sold it. Horses, you name it. And there was another horse that was a little bit bronky that my dad had at his friend's house. And my dad's friend was riding him. Well, when they took the other two horses from me and sold them, my dad said, hey, go over there to my friend's house. He's got the other horse of mine, start riding him. So I started riding him, but he was a little bronky. He did buck me off, but he was a good horse. He just kind of, he just kind of had to, he was a little cold back, you know? And so we took him home to, well, to back up a little bit, where, where my grandma lived, she lived with my great-grandma in a two-bedroom house. Oh, wow, that's a long time. Yes, well, she just passed a couple of years ago. She wow. She was 90 some years old. And uh, over there, we had a little, my, my grandma's brother had a boarding facility where he kept horses. And where we moved in there and, uh, Stayed there for a little bit, and where my grandma eventually, my dad and that lady divorced. Mm. I mean, when my dad got sentenced, he got 12 years in prison. Actually, got 14, served 12 for good behavior. Um, but uh, when they divorced, we moved in with my grandma. Three of us, three kids, me and my brother and my sister, <coughs> lived with my great grandma in a two bedroom house. So we moved my sister. We put her in a smaller bed and she slept with my great grandma. Not in the same bed, but they shared a bedroom. My grandma had her own bedroom and me and my brother had a bed 
out in the living room and we shared that bed. And uh, so we were there one night. We so, so after my dad told me to go ride that horse, started riding him, started getting used to him. So we brought him over to this place we were staying at. Well, on my 13th birthday, here comes my stepmom with the papers and a cop and takes that horse from me. And uh, it's like, cool. So, man, it's kind of a wonder how you know you still persevere and or continue to rope. You know, what can you know, kind of an animosity you have, you know, towards your stepmom and your dad during that time. Yeah, you know, not towards my dad. Um, not at all towards my dad. He made a mistake. Right. Um, you know, he never quit trying for us. Um, yeah, stepmom, what you know, whatever. Um, but uh, she. So after that. I was horseless. I had some good people, good friend of mine, the Madaris family. They took me in. They let me ride their horses, uh, high school rodeos and stuff, junior rodeos, and uh, did all through high school. Really good people. And uh, then there was a guy named uh, Peter Baldwin who owned a big ranch over there. And uh, he came to me one day and he said, Hey, uh, you want to rope with me at this roping? And I said, well, I'd love to, but I don't have a horse. And he said, well, I got one you can ride. And I said, okay. So we go to this roping. But he said, I want to make sure you can get along with him first. So I go over, and we go to another guy's house, and we rope. Get along with Clockwork. I'm heading at this time. I'm just a kid, you know, I'm heading. And uh, he's awesome. Good horse. He doesn't own this horse. This is someone else's <laughs> horse. But th at this time, they were all in cahoots I didn't know. But at this time, this is someone else's horse. So, so I get along with him practicing. So we go to the jackpot. I don't think I won anything. I don't remember. But the horse worked great. After the open, they come over and hand me the halter, lead rope, and say, "Here, he's yours." And I said, "What?" And they said, "Yeah, Peter bought him from me, and uh, he's yours." And I, man, it was, of course, you know, a pretty emotional time, and right. it was great. And you know, he didn't. He didn't give me, well, what's most really impressive about that is he didn't give me a horse that he had that was laying around. Mm -hmm. He went and bought this horse specifically for me to give to me. And man, that, that's something I'll just, I'll never forget. You know, that's just amazing how that, awesome. how that goes. But took that horse, man, and I'd do everything on him. He was 16 in one hands. He was from, <laughs> he was out of Canada. <laughs> He had furry feet. He was like half, I don't know, Morgan or something. But he was, he was a head horse when I got him. From the time I was done with him, we headed, we headed on him, we healed on him, we calf roped on him, and we had trained to do calf roping and healing because uh, we didn't know. We, you had no choice. Back then you had one horse. Yeah, no, yeah. And you make it work. Yeah. Whatever it is, you do it. You know, it doesn't matter. You don't have your real. This is my head horse. This is my heel horse. This is my calf horse. You have this is my horse. All in one exclusive. This is my horse, and we're in it. Well, yeah, I know, like you know, when we used to you know to do the title when we were kids, yeah. we had like an old pain horse, and obviously yeah. you know what pain you like, sure. you yeah. know. Um, anyways, we we rode, we'd get off, and oftentimes our horses would beat us down to the calf before we could even get down there. Yeah. You know, they they were just they oh, were yeah. not they were not calf horses by any means. Yeah, and man, I remember that horse like. We had some bottle caps sitting on the house, and we had a little tiny riding arena. I chased them bottle caps, and I practiced my calf roping. Well, I get that calf wore out, where we'd rope them 20 times in a night. My brother would untie them for me. And, uh, well, anyway, that calf would get wore down. And I feel like I was pretty like Caleb Schmidt, like, <laughs> hold it, right. hold it, stepping yeah. off. Like, I got to where I thought I was doing it. Well, this calf was trotting. Well, yeah, you can hold your slack and step off them. And so at the rodeo, I'm pumped. I'm ready. I'm going to hang it on him. I'm going to put it in my pocket. I'm going to step off running, and we're going to set the world on fire. And the first one puts me right on my head. And I'm just saying, <laughs> false confidence beyond. But, hey, whatever, you know. Yeah. That's what we did. But, hell, 16 hand horses, it would be hard to pretty step off. Absolutely, at a but, fast rate of speed. And I know you can't tell it from here, but my athletic build is not the greatest. <laughs> well, I would say otherwise, you know, but. Um, you know. 
so like the struggles and stuff that you had uh, growing up, you know, all the adversity that you had to face. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, your, you know, stepmom not being there and then not mm -hmm. having a relationship with your mom, mm -hmm. and then your uh, dad going to prison. Mm -hmm. What what did you do as far as like finances and stuff? Who was like your backing and stuff, or did you have any backing? Yeah, I had a lot. Of, I had a lot of emotional support. I had a lot of good people in my corner. Um, not a lot, you know. A lot of people don't have money in a way. There's it's kind of one or the other. Either you got it or you don't. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of you know, a lot of middle class just getting by people, you know. Uh, and so, a lot of people were there to support me, uh, you know, through through the struggles there. But financially, it, it was rough you know my grandma was one income raising three kids and so the, the only good thing we had going for us was like i said earlier my my uncle had that barn that he boarded horses in so i used that a lot to uh to to, to earn income i would clean stalls yep yeah, i'd ride people's horses um we had a lead steer around there and that's what that's where i started to learn to heal was I'd take these people would pay me to clean their stalls and then they would pay me to exercise their horses. Well, it didn't matter what they were. I, I hated, I got tired of loping <clears throat> circles all right. the time. So what, I trained every one of them to get used to a rope and every one of them to heal leads to. You know, you're getting paid to ride these horses. Yep. You got tired of loping in circles. So every one of those horses, whether they wanted, the owners wanted them to or not. They well, were it wasn't that they didn't want it. They didn't care. Right. I, mean, hell, I wasn't hurting anything. Right. Um, held the some of them was barrel horses, some of them were just trail horses. But they, they all, all got, were going to be. They all got roped to <laughs> swing a rope off of them, and they may not be worth a darn to heal on. But by the end of my riding, they all tracked the. Because I wasn't technically training on them. They just what a lot of those people that kept them there. They had full time jobs throughout the week and couldn't make it to ride during the week. So they wanted to come on the weekends. Well, they got tired of getting bucked off on them on their, <laughs> on their first Saturday off. The horse been stalled up all month eating, or all week eating alfalfa, and then they get finally get their day off to ride him, and they get bucked off. So they pay me to keep them exercised and rode down. And so that wasn't necessarily I, I did set, train a few, but a lot of it wasn't necessarily just training. It was just exercise. Yeah, just, just you you know. Yeah. Obviously. So I took that as well. Here's my opportunity. Yeah. And that poor lead steer got it. I mean, <laughs> hours, hours he'd get it, and, but he was good. I never dallied on him, you know, just tracked him at a low, healed him, figured out my timing, and, uh, and then that's where the healing, I don't know if it took off, but that's where it, where you yeah, started yeah, wanting. that's where it started really wanting. You know, yeah. kind of touch on your, your, you know, just loping in circles, getting tired, yeah. just loping in circles. Like, I couldn't do that. Like, you know, I have the barrel racers. Yeah. And they don't ever hardly make runs, and they, you know, they just lope circles, you know, or just lope in a straight line or something like that. You know how boring that is, you know? Yeah, it takes so discipline. Like, it's really bad. Like, I need to do better about getting my horses out sure. and, you know, just taking them out of the arena. But it's really like their exercise is in the arena because, yeah. I mean, I can't, I don't know, I'm not a trail rider, man. I yeah, can't. no, I get it. I, I get it. I get bored too. And I just, like I said, took that opportunity, man. One, got paid to ride them, and two, might as well, Perfecting might, your as well craft, learn, might as well learn something mm -hmm. too. So, we did that. I cleaned stalls for three dollars uh, every time. I wouldn't clean them every day, but uh, you know whatever they wanted. If they wanted me to clean it once or twice a week or every three dollars back in that time was a decent amount, wasn't it? I guess I don't know yeah. what it would get you, but yeah. Well, maybe not in Hawaii. Yeah, especially not in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hawaii is very expensive. But and then <clears throat> I charge fifty dollars a week to ride them. 200 bucks a month and uh and i was tickled there of course how old are you at the time oh I'd be high school age i'd be 13 to i did this from 13 to 17. yeah so yeah and, and that was my jackpot money because grandma didn't have jackpot money right and if i didn't win couldn't go there anymore yeah and, and uh if, if you didn't win a lot of times if you didn't win something in the first couple of opens you were done for the day, mm -hmm. not just the weekend. Yeah. Uh, so, um, thankfully, there wasn't a jackpot every weekend like there is here. So I had a month to kind of get three dollars a stall. The eggs back in the basket. <laughs> start putting it back together and go. And and back to the back to that guy that bought me the horse, Peter Baldwin. Another thing he had, he had started a Tuesday and Thursday practice, and so those guys. 
it was a public practice. Anybody could come, and it was ten dollars, and you could rope all you want. But he wouldn't charge the kids. All the kids rope free. So man, what a guy! I was in. Yeah. So, but I had no driver's license. My grandma was working. Had nobody take me there. So one day we're sitting there and we watched this guy. A guy I knew him my whole life, Gilbert Souza. Drives by the house with his truck and trailer. And uh, somebody mentioned, he said, you know, I'll call that guy and see if he can give you a ride to practice. I said, he's headed right up there to the practice. So one day I, I did, broke down, I called him. And he said, yeah, absolutely, uh, I'd love to. And he picked me up every Tuesday, Thursday. I'd, I'd come home from school, hurry up, run through the side of my horse, and I'd lead my horse out to the front gate, and he'd pull over to the side of the road, and I'd jump my horse in the trailer, and off to practice we went. And you know, he used to take three horses, he had a three horse trailer. He used to take three horses to practice. He always left one out so he could fit me. And uh, even his little cooler, he liked his beer. He had a little cooler that would hold a six pack. Mm -hmm. And he had five beers and one pop. For beer. <laughs> just, it just, just good. This was really, really good to me. And I had a lot, like I said, had a lot of cool people help, like help, help me with a lot of things, uh, roping and stuff like that. And I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not mentioning a lot of names, right. you know, but, um, those are kind of some key points there. And, uh, so I know what we've talked about, let's kind of move uh, this to where, you know, college, your yeah. scholarship yeah. and how it was then. I know we've talked about it, you know, um, a little bit of how, you know, you, you slept in a, in the tack room or something like that. You what? didn't have a place to stay. Or... Yeah. So the first year we were in the dorms and that was all paid for. My grandma had all set up where I had a house. Now at this time, I'm kind of, independent on, I mean, I, I've kind of, at this point in my life, I've kind of gotten to where it's kind of getting hard to tell me something anymore. I've kind of seen enough and, I've, and I'm getting a little bit too big for my britches and stuff like that, but um, not having a ton of guidance, you know, not having a man in the, in the picture to slap you around and right. say, hey, that's stupid, you know? And so made some mistakes here and there, but my grandma had me set up first to head to dorms for the year. Well, when that year came up, I'm, we got the bright idea, a bunch of us college kids got the bright idea, we're going to uh, rent a house together. And it's gonna be cheaper, and we're gonna have our own house, and we're, we, well, what we didn't figure was that we would never all have the money for rent at the same time. <laughs> One guy would have it, <clears throat> then the other guy wouldn't have it. And we did that for a semester, and we were done. I mean, we, we moved out of the house and, well, to back that up, the first semester in college, everybody went home for winter break. Well, I didn't go home for winter break. So they're like, so I asked them if I could stay in the dorms. They said, no, you can't. We, nobody stays in the dorms during winter break. Well, I had a job, full-time job, and I was just going to stay here and work for winter break. I said, well, you can't stay in the dorms. So another buddy of mine, he had a horse trailer, and it was just a nose, and it was insulated. But I remember in the mornings, you get up, so we slept in the nose of that trailer, and I remember in the morning, you'd get up, and your boot, you'd have to rattle it off the floor because it would be froze to the floor. And uh, slept for a month. For 30 days, yep, till the donors open back up. Then we're working in the feed yard all day long. And that, that living quarters trailer, never, it wasn't, it wasn't a living quarters trailer. Kind of like it was, a stock it was just bed a, or just a bed. So no bathroom, no nothing. So we had, I had the thing parked by the horse barn, by the college horse uh -huh. barn. So I wasn't staying in their dorms, but I was damn sure using their bathroom and showering over there and the whole deal. And, uh, and that's what I did for 30 days. And then, uh, they went back to the, then we went to the house that the rent was a wreck trying to figure out the rent. Well, then when summer came up, we just up and left. Well, then again, back to nowhere to go. So I just slept in the back seat of my truck. I didn't want to rent, I, didn't, I couldn't afford to rent a place. I was working, yes, but I mean, you know, to go rent a full bone mm -hmm. house by yourself and fully knowing that when the school year starts up in August, I'm back in the dorms. So I'm like, well, I'm not gonna go rent somewhere for three months. So I kept, 
a horse over there at my boss's place and we roped every day and I slept in the back seat of my truck every day and the whole time he was remodeling a house he was living in one remodeling and the funny thing is this is where I live today now I'm not anymore I mean I, uh, there was a big gap right. for a minute but where I live today right now is that same place my brother works for him now and the house he lives in now he was remodeling and he left the bathroom uh, untouched for a while he was working on the rest of the house and then we we slept in the truck with him and used use the shower and stuff in, in, in his house that he was remodeling and uh, and he lived in the house where I live right now and then moved into the house he remodeled later but um, that's kind of funny where that all right like 15 years yeah. later that, that all goes right back to and that's where I live today but yeah man that's that's awesome having I know like having emotional support stuff you know growing up yeah. and stuff that's kind of almost worth more than money in yeah, a sense you sure. know to be able to have those you know, that guy that you know bought you the horse just yeah. for you you know yeah. and then that's yeah. that's really awesome you just can't so and back to that when I left to go to college I called him up and said hey I'm leaving for college I'd like this horse back he said I'll sell it and use the money for college and uh, by then the horse was pretty old and sore and uh I had another family uh, let me use their horse for a little bit and uh, used him for a while, used both of them for a while. And then uh, I ended up just giving that horse away to an old lady. She wanted something really gentle to just walk down the trails. So I gave that horse to an old lady and I came off to college. And uh, he lived for several, several years with a trail horse, but yeah, yeah, it was a pretty good long life. But, so fast forward, um, I know we've talked about, you know, you going to uh, Texas and stuff, and mm -hmm. we actually had this conversation the other day, uh, vaguely, as I was headed to uh, Garden, you talked about these guys waking up at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m., yeah. or you waking up at 4 a.m., so, so kind of tell us about that. Yeah, so I went to college several years, and then after college, I was riding pins at Steedlot, full-time job, and I just kind of got to where, man, I, you know, always had that NFR dream, you know, that always there's three little letters just always looming over your head and, and wanting to wanting to get there someday and, and I thought man I'm not going to do it here right at pins you know I got to get I got to get in front of the right people I got to get get in front of knowledge you got to get got to get out of here you know and uh, so at that time it in in my head the biggest names at that time was as far as clinicians and all that was Walt Woodard and Tyler Magnus and I thought, man, if I ever run into either one of them guys, I'd, I'd like to talk to them about doing something, doing some sort of internship or something. So I went, Tyler Magnus had a school. He's actually got a he's got an uncle up there that lives not very far from me. And uh, he had to put on school, so I signed up for the school, went to the school. And we got along really good. He helped me quite a bit. And uh, so he, at, at the end of one of my runs, he said, man, you want to come down and hang out with us sometime? And I said, man, I'd love to. He said, well, okay, like, I'll think about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. see what I've got yeah, going yeah. on. But, I, but honestly, I didn't jump on it right away because I couldn't afford it. Right. And so I said, well, I'd love to. I said, I don't know that I can afford it. He said, well, it won't cost you nothing. Just come hang out. He said, I said, man, are you looking to hire anybody? He said, oh, no, we're, we're not hiring nobody. But if you want to come down and hang out, it won't cost you a thing. And, and just just for no reason, just kindness of his heart, you know. So I thought about that whole school. I thought about it a few days later. And got his number from his uncle. Called his uncle and got, his, got Tyler's phone number. Called Tyler. And uh, he said, yeah, I told you to come down whenever you want. I said, yeah, but... Is there any way you can get, I can get a job down there? He said, man, no, we're not really, we're not really hiring anything right now. And so he said, but just come down and hang out all you want. I was like, okay, well, I don't know that I can do that. But he said, we talked for a minute, and then he said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, uh, come down for a minute, and we'll, just, we'll, we'll see how it goes. What year is this? Give us a This is 2009. 2009. Yep, coming in. I'm sorry, this will be coming into. 2010. This would be 2010. Yep, this is the fall of 2010. So, 
So I get into, and we're getting close. To, back then, the U.S. Finals was end of October. Mm-hmm. So we're getting kind of close. This, this has been the first part of October. And so I, Tyler says, come down and just just come down and hang out. And I said, okay. So I, it was two weeks before U.S. Finals. So I thought, man, nonetheless, if I can just go down there and just listen to what he's telling the people, might brush me up for the U.S. Finals. Right. It's just two weeks off of work. I think I can swing this. I've already paid my fees at the U.S. Finals. I've worked all summer. So I think I can swing this. So we work out a day to get, get that going down there. And I call, and just goes a voicemail. Goes a voicemail. And I'm like, oh, no, Tyler stood me up. And he didn't. He was doing school, and he was really busy. And uh, so the next day, he calls me back. And, and I was kind of, that whole night, I was like, bummed. I didn't, right. I didn't think I was going to get to go down there. Next morning, he called me and I said, yeah, I'm so sorry about that. I was at school, so yeah, I had to come on down. You know, so I, I take off, and uh, this rig I'm in is something special. Half-ton Chevy, single wide, I'm sorry, single horse bumper pull. And I got everything I own in the back seat of this truck. Driving down there, no AC, and like three CDs. And this is September-ish. This is October. October. In Texas. In Texas. Still 90 10 degree. hour drive. Or 90 degrees. Yeah, 10 hour drive. One way. I hoof it down there. I get down there, it's pitch black. And uh, we didn't quite discuss just exactly where Tyler lived. We knew the town. This is the time of left turn 10 miles right turn yeah. county road 55 yeah exactly he has no apple maps no man no. you're kind of out there turn between, Clark in it. turn between the bank and the valero station that was his directions <laughs> and uh well i so i'm thinking i just call him when i get close and get directions to his house well i get down to not no bars your phone says no service like I can't do nothing. It's pitch black. So I find like a RV campground, and I thought, well, screw it. I'll just pull in here, sleep in my truck tonight, wake up in the morning. Surely somebody in this town will either one have service or two know where Tyler Magnus lives. And that was back in the time, you know, go to the gas station and say, hey, do yeah. you know you're the, you know, absolutely. the stranger on the side of the sidewalk, you know, how do I get there? Yeah, it was, you know, friendly back in that day. Yeah, so I, I pull into this, like, RV plug-in campground. I go down and load my horse. So I'll tie to the trailer. There's water. I'm oh, perfect, I water my horse. And I go down and load this horse, and I hear this guy screaming and hollering at me. Don't you dare unload that horse over here. And I'm like, Sorry, sir. He said, you do not unload that horse over here. He said, there's pins down there at the arena. I said, there's an arena? He said, yeah, there's an arena right there. That's where we put the horses in. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm not, I, I'm not from around here. I don't have no idea what's going on. I just, he said, about that time, this white dooley comes pulling in the fairgrounds. And uh, the guy goes, you know that guy in that white dooley? I said, sir, uh, again, I, I'm not from here. I don't know who. He said, that guy's name is Possum. I said, really? He said, yeah, he works for that. He works for that. Oh, I don't know. He's he's a rodeo guy. Tyler Mankus. <laughs> and I said, he works for Tyler Mankus, huh? He said, yes. I need to talk to that guy. I said, okay. So I went over there. Possum is a good old dude. And uh, I talked to him. Shook, shook his hand. He said, oh, I know who you are. He said, yeah, we met you at this school in, in Kansas. He said, yeah, I was there. And I said, well, shoot. And then it kind of started clicking there. Well, he let me sleep on the couch in his RV that night. And he said, you can just follow me into Tyler's in the morning. He said, you don't want to go out there tonight. You'll never find him. It's out in the sticks. And his name Where is this was. at? Uh, Mason, Texas. Is that South Texas? It's south of Brady, west of Lano. Gotcha. Yeah, west gotcha. of Lano. So, uh, so we did that. Worked for Tyler for almost a year. And then A year? Yeah, yeah. What, so you ended up getting a job. With well, him. yeah, I kind of fast forward there a little too much. Yeah. But yeah. So Possum takes me up there, and there's Tyler. Hey, Kingston, how's it going? Good. He goes, can you head? I said, well, a little bit. So he said, well, we got some students here today, and I got some 
few horses I need to ride. So he said, well, jump on the head horse. So jumped on a couple head horses and I headed all day. I went to eat lunch. He said, in heaven. You were in heaven. I was in heaven. Didn't care. It's better than riding pins. <laughs> yeah, roped all day. That's the first time I drove all that day. That sucks having a long day like that. <laughs> yeah, it it, uh, it it was it was something I'd never done before. And uh, we come back from lunch. I remember getting goosebumps. The first year they run after lunch, Casey Gaddis was heading for Tyler at the Pro Rodeos at that time. And Casey comes across on a big black horse and he hooks one fast. And Tyler comes running and just gets him and his horse slides 20 feet. They're both, and Casey's horse just swaps ends and runs backwards. And just, like I remember vividly getting goosebumps watching that practice pin run. That's the first time I'd seen horse flesh like that outside of watching, right. uh, you know, like an open or something like, like the, the reason I got goosebumps was thinking, man, I get to see this every day. Like this is, this is the whole reason I'm here. This is chasing the NFR dream. This is the, all, this is why we're here. And, uh, so I head for him for, like I said, U.S. Finals is in two weeks. Told my boss at the feed yard that I needed two weeks off for this deal. And I told him what was going on. I said, now, if Tyler hires me, I'm, I'm probably going to do something here. And he said, okay, I, I understand. So after about a week down there, my boss at the feed yard calls me. Tyler hadn't offered me no job. Boss at the feed yard calls me, and he goes, uh, I kind of need to know what you're doing. We're kind of needing help. And we got a guy here asking for a job. And I, I don't want to hire him if you're going to come back, but I kind of need him if you're not. And it really put me on the spot. Right. So I'm like, well, and meanwhile, I'm asking all the locals there that come by and rope, anybody know of a job around? Because I'm thinking, Tyler Dunn told me he can't hire me. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, well, let's, maybe I can work somewhere for half a day I don't have to make a lot of money, just enough to eat and pay my bills, maybe go to a jackpot or two. And uh, I'm looking, I'm not finding a job. And then my boss calls me and makes me make a decision. I said, well, go ahead and hire the guy. I said, I don't have a job here, but I said, go ahead and hire the other guy. I'll figure it out when I get home, if, if Tyler, doesn't, Tyler doesn't do anything. So we go for another week. Tyler's getting ready to go to the U.S. Finals. He's got his truck trailer. He's loading his saddles, loading his horses. And we're all kind of standing there saying bye to him. And at this point, we have not talked about anything. Right. About me staying, working, nothing. And so he's walking. He's loading his horse. He's walking to his trailer, shakes everybody's hand. See you guys later. He's walking to his truck. And he about gets in. He stops and goes, oh, yeah, Kingston, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? I'm just said, here, man. Yeah, he said, well, I said, what do you mean? He said, you come back after the U.S. Finals? And I said, man, Tyler, I, if I do, I'm going to have to have a job. And I said, I, there's no way I can do it without it. Oh, yeah, no problem. Here, let's sit down and figure it out. So we sat down. <laughs> he was planning to hire me the whole time. Never told me. And I almost <laughs> forgot about it until he got in his truck to leave. He almost went back to, like, I almost to the, went, the, the Dodge, Dodge City, City. Yeah. air conditioner. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so that's not, so in all of the U.S. Finals, Roped over there was second high callback in the 11 shootout. This is when Wesley Thorpe was a little kid. And second high callback, and I've got to be long seven. Sean Stapleton comes across there, spins me the perfect steer to take the leading rope. And we've only got to sweat one team. I come in and rope two feet, and my horse is front leg. And this is back $100,000 U.S. finals days. Like this, is, this is 2010. This is where... Oklahoma City is This booming. is 2010. I'm about to get my air conditioner fixed right yeah. here. Yeah, my horse was crippled on all four legs. And uh, I told him, I said, one more run, buddy, and we won't ever have to do it again. And evidently, he wasn't ready to retire. Because <laughs> we got too many feet in the, in the loop. And uh, that was, that one kept me up at night for a while. And moved back down to Texas, loaded all my, one got what a few things I didn't take with me to Texas, loaded back up, went back down there again. Ten hour drive, and about the time I'm forgetting it, Tyler has a rope in about thirty days later, and there's this little kid. I have no idea who this guy is. I don't know who won the rope, and I don't know nothing about it. And he's standing next to me in line, and he goes, uh, "You go to U.S. We're talking. You go to U.S. Finals?" 
And he said, I said, yeah, I did. He said, good, good. And I said, no. He said, I, I said, I was second high call back in the 11 shootout and I roped two feet and my horse is front leg. And he goes, oh, dad, this is one of the guys that let me win the roping. <laughs> and I thought, you won the 11 shootout then? Oh yeah, yeah, I was fifth high call back. Yeah, I won it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I was like, like, oh man, I got beat by a little kid. <laughs> but, well, we come to find out that Wesley was no joke. Yeah, yeah right. but Very at fast. that time, I didn't know who he was, especially coming from Kansas. I suppose the guys in Texas knew who he were, but I didn't know who he was, and it was it was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, I worked there for Tyler for for almost a year, and then you know it was good. I learned a lot. But the problem with some of them deals is you don't get to work on yourself a lot. Mm -hmm. You're always training the horse. You're always spinning the steers for students. You're always doing so. You don't get to work on yourself just a lot. So I thought, well, I learned a lot, and uh, and time to go home and put it, put it to work, you know. So so that's what I did. Moved back to Kansas and just kind of been dabbling in and out of ranch and stuff here and there, and do the sailboard thing now. But uh, but then that's when roping with Ryan, uh, circuit rodeoing, and then that's where you guys came along. Yeah, so about that, that was, yeah. man, that was a blast. Yeah. Um, I don't really even know how we got uh, hooked up with Ryan. So me and Ryan planned the whole circle, energy all and everything. And so everywhere we go. So, so we're up at Deadwood tomorrow? No, we're up at <laughs> Wahoo tomorrow. Or when do we go to here? We, you know, we tell him 14 times we went somewhere. So. <laughs> He didn't and have I always ask. I remember this now. Yeah. You guys gave me so much extra. Yeah, that. yeah. You, a lot of times you wouldn't know where we were until we pulled in and be like, "Oh, we're there in this rodeo. Cool, man." Just yeah. being a healer, man. Just being you. A you healer. play the card perfectly to the T. Sleep and <laughs> don't know where we're going. You've gotten better since, but at that time, <laughs> all you cared about was getting feet. Well, I didn't have and to. You guys are the veterans. You know? don't know where we're back there with it. You know, the you know, stepson hanging out with the dads, you know, yeah. you guys are just taking care of us, you know, and yeah, just, man. The deal. <laughs> what about the time we went to uh, we were in Manhattan, mm -hmm. like we just talked about, we made oh, good yeah. runs there, yeah. And uh, Jeremiah and uh, Ryan went to the bar, yep. And so Chang and I are just kind of hanging out by ourselves, and um, like, man, you hungry? You want some ice cream? Yeah, I do. So, anyways. <laughs> Like what? I mean, thank goodness that that thing was like twenty four hours. It was late. Yeah, it was late. It was late. And so we jump in the truck. We're going to Freddy's again. The Wendy's. No Wendy's. Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's was yeah. open. We go and I'm not hungry at this time. And like it's late. I mean, one thirty, two o'clock in the morning, yeah. something we're, like that. We're we're about to go pick him up from the bar. Yeah, yeah, we're about to go pick him up because we had one rig. We didn't want to be stuck at the trailer, you know, whatever. And um, so we get to the Wendy's. And we whip around there, and he orders, you want, you want anything? I'm, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then he gets his food and his ice cream. <laughs> Man, I need some of that. Yeah. I need some of that in my life. So we just went, like, we're the only ones in this park a lot, and we just went right back around, and uh, that the the person who was taking our order was like, heard us talking, you know, was like, you want anything? I'm like, no, I'm fine. Way back around, I was like, you changed your mind, huh? I was like, yeah. I take a, a swirl in a cup, and I got like a baconator or something like. That. So, again, the hit on you know the funny parts of our store traveling together, we uh, we would go eat, and any time like you would ask Chang like you'd have to ask Chang one time, and like barbecue, barbecue is his is his spot. You know that's that's what he likes. So if we if we ever asked him, it's always barbecue. You didn't you know got to the point where you don't have to ask him. If there's a barbecue <laughs> joint, then we're stopping this barbecue that's joint. <laughs> One time you said you said we were headed to uh, somewhere. We were in Salinas. Not Salinas. Salina. Salina. Oh yeah, sorry. A little different than Salinas. Yeah. Yeah. Ocean but, yeah. property over there. Whatever. <laughs> no, we were headed to uh, Strong City, and we stopped in Salina to eat, and all of us went ate a different place. Me, you, JC, and Ryan. Didn't, yeah. Didn't like all? I think I went. We, to, we parked Arby's. Yep. Yeah, I went to a barbecue place. I went to Freddy's. JC went to Freddy's, and I don't know where Ryan went. <laughs> There's no telling. There's no telling. There's no telling right there. Yeah, probably Subway. He's a, he's a clean eater. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, but I know we ate good. Yeah, yeah. We, but good. we did stuff like that all the time. Well, what about when we went to uh, Deadwood, bro? 
Yeah. When we did, we, we tried to go to the casino, gamble a little bit. Yeah. And every one of them were closed. We got in some steps that night. We did. We, we did some walking. Walk we walked around. off that barbecue that night. Yeah, we yeah. did. We definitely did. Yeah. But yeah, man, what a cool arena! Cool oh, arena. Wow. That's one. Of, that's my favorite. Beautiful. Place. I've not done good there. Well, no, but, one year. No, but it's it's a cool, cool oh, place. Such a cool. That's spot. one of the first places I got to go when uh, when I was working for Tyler. We we traveled that summer and uh, went to Cheyenne and all that. And, he was doing schools up there and I was traveling with him and I remember going with him to watch Deadwood and I thought, what a beautiful place, what a beautiful arena. Days of 76, baby. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Because he knows I don't drink and like right, I'm not into right. the party crowd and, and he says, man, they don't drink, then they're good, you know? So I was like, okay, that's fine, let's go. And so that's how that all went. So me and Ryan planned the whole circle, energy all and everything. And so everywhere we go, so, so we're up at Deadwood tomorrow? No, we're up at <laughs> Wahoo tomorrow. Or when do we go to here? Are we, go? You know, we tell him 14 times we went somewhere. So he didn't and have... I always ask, I remember this now. Yeah. You guys gave me so much extra. Yeah, that. yeah. You, a lot of times you wouldn't know where we were until we pulled in and be like, oh, we're there in this rodeo? Cool. Man, just yeah. being a healer, man. Just being you, a healer. You play the card perfectly. To the T. Sleep and <laughs> don't know where we're going. <laughs> You've gotten better since, but at that time, <laughs> all you cared about was getting feet. Well, I didn't have and to. You guys are the veterans, you know. I was just sitting back there with, you know, the you know the stepson hanging out with the dads, you know. Yeah. You guys are just taking care of us, you know. And, yeah. Yes. Man, thank you. Yeah. Well, so, whenever I was like, I don't know, I don't, I'm not even sure how we even uh, got linked up with Ryan. Obviously, we've known the boat rides for for a long sure. time. They live just used to live just you know 13 14 miles yeah, from us. Far, yeah. and i always remember just going being a little guy just driving by their house in the indoor like drooling out the window yeah. you know like, wow, <laughs> like an indoor oh, cool. arena you know like sure. these guys live right here you NFR know like guys, yeah multiple yeah NFR, exactly yeah. and then i just wish like man it'd be so cool to be able to rope with them you know yeah. just go you go you know you know just the whole deal yeah, you know just, just drooling being, being a little kid, kid. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah i say kid i was probably like 13 or 14 whatever that's <laughs> same difference that's a kid um, anyways we got we got linked up with ryan and um so i'd seen chain at a couple of jackpots you know um years prior to us even no. uh, meeting at, you know formally um at a, the jackpots in like dodge city or something Hugo 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 yeah yeah, yeah. Up yep, yep. yeah. so i'd kind of known chain known of chain for a little while and then yeah. <clears throat> jeremiah was like yeah, I was buddy with uh, Ryan and his partner, which is a really good thing. You know, my brother and I, we have had like no help into this sure. rodeo deal. You know, everything we like, we've learned on ourselves by ourselves, really. Yeah. Um, you know, my brother will talk to you know, Colin every now and again, call me, give some, give his two cents, and yeah. appreciate that. Appreciate all the knowledge um, that we have been given. Yeah. But as far as you know, entering the rodeo, doing the trades, the deadlines, this, you know, all the dot and I's and, yeah. and, and crossing the T's. But anyways, we go. We picked um, Ryan up on the way to, I don't even remember our first one, what was that? Do first one was uh, Pretty, uh, Pretty Prairie. Pretty Prairie, yeah. okay. So we, we go and meet Chang somewhere, uh, maybe at, Jeff at, Smith. At, no, we met, we met at Pretty Prairie. We met we at Pretty Prairie. Run our steer, then went from there. Gotcha. Yeah. And then so we go somewhere to a Krispy Kreme. Not a Krispy Kreme. Freddy's. Freddy's, went to Freddy's and I like ice cream. Yeah. I mean, Chang likes ice cream. Like Those We go on ice cream dates, okay, when we're on the road. <laughs> anyways, we'll come to that here in a minute. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we met Chang, and we're at Freddy's, and we actually we both did good at Pretty Prairie. Yep, we did. You guys took the lead. We, we went first. We not first, but we went before. We were buddies, and we were the first team to yeah. go of us two. And we, we caught one, placed him something, and then you guys came out behind and took the lead of the rodeo. And, it, and well, just until the very next run, it was um, Casey, um, Casey and Steve. Yeah. And then I was like, man, whatever, well, Steve, you know. Yeah. But that, was, that was our first time being on the yeah. Cowboy Channel, too. And that was, wow. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, fast forward. Um, that was a good rodeo. It was a fun rodeo. We went to Freddy's. And, you know, I'm being, I'm a, a comical guy, I would like to think. Um, kind of witty, whatever. And I'm real serious. We're eating this I got worm, worm in a cup or something like that. You know, it's called dirt. Yeah, something. Yeah, it's really, really, really good. If you go to Freddy's, you got to get that. I don't know if there's any other ice cream but dirt. But anyways, yeah. um, I'm asking Jane, you know, 
what's it like? You know, how, how do you like it here in America? And then Shane just kind of just dropped, put his cup on the table and he's like, oh, oh my gosh. It's good. Jim, my, my little brother, uh, I was obviously just kidding. And my little brother was like, oh my God, you know, he's talking crap to me or whatever. And um, I don't know what Chang is thinking at this time because this is the first time that we've This is our first yeah. sitting down talking ever. And I just start cracking up with yeah. a joke. Is, uh, you know, How's America, Chang? Yeah. How do you like it over here? Yeah. You were joking. You don't know how many people seriously right. asked me that question. I thought, oh, here's another one. Well, like just here a little bit ago, uh, we had a friend here who just asked you, like, is that a is that an island? Yeah, <laughs> and he's very witty, so I don't I don't remember exactly how you responded to me. So well, they're all islands. Uh, well, no, 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 no. I, the, you know, when I said about being in America. Oh, I don't remember either. But it was, it was very witty. But you yeah. know, just to kind of hit on his wittiness, he was like, uh, "Well, it's a state." Whenever that well, our friend asked him <laughs> if it was an island or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> It is but, a state yeah. in America, just to clear that up. <laughs> and we got hot water and microwaves, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. And where did we go after that? Do you remember? Went to Manhattan the next night. Manhattan. Same thing. We made a clean run. Slayson, you guys come right behind. Take the lead. That we had, a, you know, they, they beat us and we beat them. I mean, it was like it was a it was a good deal. We had, the truck was always winning money at that fun. time. It was it was a really a fun time. It was fun. Had a lot yeah. of a lot of funny stories. Um, yeah. Ryan, Ryan's like a movie actor now. Yeah, eighteen eighty three. Um, yeah, he was twenty three. Exactly. Yeah, you know, on Yellowstone so, and stuff or whatever. Yeah, the prequels, the sequels, you know. Yeah, which is really really cool. Um, but we loved making fun of Ryan. So that's often highlight of our trip. Oh, every time, you know, he yeah. had this cowboy hat and it was all bent up and it was a straw hat. It was, you know, summer rodeos, all bent up and, you know, thank God for uh, a Snapchat because I, I, re I record everything, you know, and it's awesome because you get to look back at all the memories and laugh, you know, yeah. I mean, like I feel for people who didn't have, you know, cameras and Snapchat and stuff, yeah. you, know, you know, back in the day, you obviously like, yeah. whenever you rode that bull twice. <laughs> yeah. Well, got on him. <laughs> well, got on, okay, got got on him on twice. Him, right. Yeah, yeah, road is stretching. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what, what are some things that, that Ryan would do? But we're not gonna try to go in too much depth because we don't want to, you know, step on Ryan's toes or have Ryan beat us <laughs> up, you know, but. How funny, funniest, one of the funniest Ryan stories, we're sitting there at Phillipsburg, last bird, and uh, he's sitting there about to shoot you, and this guy comes walking by, and Ryan goes, hey, who's that guy in the black pants? I said, Benny Butler? He goes, oh, is that who that is? <laughs> I was an Oklahoma cowboy, and his far dad, you know who Benny Butler is? <laughs> so, that guy is <laughs> Something else. They kind of hit on that. Like when we were in, in Deadwood, yeah. and like I mean, I'm very, very wet behind the ears, and you know I don't know anybody by name, know nothing, and uh, we we're at the Buck and Shoots watching the slack go at Deadwood, mm -hmm. and uh, Clint Summers comes up to me, and he just like you know starts a conversation, you know asked who it was, whatever, how it was, and anyways he rides off, and then me and Chainsaw, I was like, um, who is that? And then, uh, Shane, obviously, very witty, he's like, God, you gotta be kidding me. You've been hiding under a rock or what? And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't know, you know, but, you know, yeah. it's been. No, the part of the fun of that trip was uh, you didn't know where we were going half the time. <laughs> and me and Ryan, see, because how this whole deal started, me and Ryan actually planned this trip together. Like, we, we were roping with different guys for the first part of the summer, then we everybody split. So me and Ryan talked, we were gonna go on this little 11 day, gone from home, I mean, circle, you know? And so we just find it and he says, hey, you mind if the Yankos go with us? I was like, well, I don't care, whatever. He said, oh, they're good guys, they'll be all right. Find the deal. <laughs> what about the time we went to, uh, we were in Manhattan, mm -hmm. like we just talked about, we made oh, good yeah. runs there. Yeah. And uh, Jeremiah and, uh, Ryan went to the bar, yep. and so Chang and I are just kind of hanging out by ourselves. And um, like, man, you hungry? You want some ice cream? Yeah, I do. So, anyways, <laughs> like, what? I mean, thank goodness that that thing was like twenty four hours. It was yeah, late. It was, late. it was late. And so we jump in the truck. We're going to 
Freddy's again. The Wendy's. No, Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's, Wendy's was yeah. open. We go and I'm not hungry at this time. And like it's late. I mean, 1 30, 2 o'clock in the morning, yeah. something we, like that. We're, we're about to go pick them up from the bar. Yeah, yeah, we're about to go pick them up because we had one rig. We didn't want to be stuck at the trailer, you know, whatever. And, um, so we get to the Wendy's and we whip around there and he orders. You want, you want anything? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then he gets his food and his ice cream. I'm like, man, I need some of that. I need some of that in my life. So we just went, like, we're the only ones in this parking lot. And we just went right back around. And uh, that the, the person who was taking our order was like, heard us talking, you know, was like, you want anything? I'm like, no, I'm fine. Way back around, I was like, you changed your mind, huh? I was like, yeah. I'll take a, a swirl in a cup, and I got like, a baconator or something like that. But Yeah, so you were, you were still fighting. I, I was done. I was done with the denial stages of <laughs> my addiction to ice cream. You, you, were, you were fighting it. You were, uh, but it showed. Right. <laughs> right. And then, like, you know, Chang, Chang is very simple. Like, he's very, very cool. And, and uh, when you really get to know him, like, man, he's really a good dude. And we, anytime I go to the gas station or something anywhere, like, you know, we're always, I mean, we're bros. Like, we were bros. Like, we weren't just, you know, hauling rodeo, split money or whatever, split fuel and stuff. Like, we got along together really well. And we would go, I would go to the gas station and Chang would get these big old Dr. Peppers and a Reese's bar. Mm -hmm. And every time I go to the gas station, I'd, I'd bring Chang back a uh, Reese's and Dr. Pepper. And then, it was last year, we were up at the same rodeo. Um, it was around the racetrack in Kansas, Circuit Rodeo. Oh, uh, Eureka. Eureka, yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, I go to the gas station and we're all hanging out, we get together. And we like we hauled separate um, at to this rodeo, and I come back with a Dr Pepper and Reese's for, for my bro Chang. Yeah, just kind of knows the way to my heart. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's what everybody knows me as, Dr Pepper and Reese's. Man, so yeah. here we are. I mean, that was two years ago. Can you believe that? Two years ago. Yeah, kind of. At times it feels like going by fast, and at times it feels like going by slow. I don't. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of on the day when it's I was kind asking, of, well, where are we going next? Yeah, 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 we didn't miss that every, every day. Where are we at tomorrow? Oh, my goodness. But, man, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was fun. You guys kicked the tar out of them. Almost won the circuit. You didn't have, because this was, this was the end of July. Pretty pretty the end of July. You guys had like $300 won in the circuit, maybe. And it's something, you something guys like spanked them from then on. I mean, you guys just clacked them and damn near won the circuit. But, uh, yeah. It was, you guys was on fire. <laughs> about, about Ryan, you know, like, like I said, like I said, I don't want to go into, you know, <laughs> a bunch of our stories because obviously this is going to social media and they'll tell yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. who or who or how many is going to watch yeah. this. But man, we had some very, very good inside jokes, you know, just, oh yeah. Um, Ryan, you tell Ryan something. You, if you say, <laughs> a, if you say a story, <clears throat> Ryan's not going to be like, Oh man, like that's that's cool, Chang. You're gonna tell Ryan a story, and he's like, "Oh really? Uh, oh yeah." And then he's gonna tell you a story that's similar, but you know, just a little bit better. You know, um, we love it. Like we love Ryan. Like yeah, we keep it real with him. Man. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to wonder what we're thinking. No, yeah, yeah he, he would never get like sold up mad, but he would he would get grumpy, and then he'd get over it. I made over it quick. I made he's, a he's on Snapchat. I made a, a live with Boater. Oh. And it was a private story where I just, you know, it was just Snapchats of, of Ryan only. And man, I don't know how many people were on there, but man, it yeah. was it was comical. It was, um, fun. it was very very fun. Yeah. Good times. Anything else you want to? Uh, no, we're fixing the. Well, I guess I'm just going to talk about me getting Tito's. Oh yeah. yeah. So here it is, um, the third of April. Yeah. Uh, we're making this video and. Chang came to Crescent just to make this um, podcast video with me. Yep. No, I'm just kidding. Nick. No, but actually, his horse actually got hurt when? Yep. October of last year. It's so been that long. He got hurt in October, and he's still not not looking great for, for like, you know, our circuit deal will start up. For me, Diamond, first part of May, and he ain't looking like that's going to yeah. he's going to be ready for that. Anyways, I've got a I've got a really really good five year old that I think is going to be an exceptional heel horse. I've hauled him to jackpots and stuff, and I've hauled him I've hauled him to two rodeos um, where he's you know he's done really well. So I'm super excited to be able to um, you know help my bro out. But not only is I'm helping him, he's helping me 
it's a win-win because uh, when I go out for rodeos in, in June, um, like he would be staying home and I wouldn't have no use for him. He would just literally be sitting and you know be behind uh, more or less. So I heard that he, we had talk, like I said, we talk all the time and uh, his horse was not looking good. I thought, you know, bro, like come get this horse, you know, obviously come try and make sure you like him first and then uh, just use him for the summer, you know? Yeah. So yeah, no, I can't. I'm excited. He looks really, really good. I can't wait to get on. About to get on him here, and, and yeah, I just man, just you turned him loose with me. That that's unreal. Like I said, you never know where where the world's going to take you. You never know what connection to who will come from where. You know what I mean? Like just, just me roping with Ryan built that friendship to help me with this, and now Lord knows where the horse deal's gonna go what right. what memories we'll make here and yeah. all that and, and stuff and man it's just it's cool i really 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 appreciate it i mean because i know you Absolutely. love this horse with oh, i know he's special to yeah. you and, yeah. and uh and i won't be nervous <laughs> I, well, i'm, I'm excited peeking out the window <laughs> make sure he's okay. I mean, yeah well you're gonna have to send me some, like daily snapchats give me oh, like wow. you know my daily dose of titos oh, you know the horse obviously yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. um and then obviously I cannot wait to watch him on the Cowboy Channel and stuff like this. Sure. It's going to be a good time. So if you guys tune in to the Cowboy Channel, um, you know, Circuit Rodeos in Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, or Kansas, or whatever, Nebraska, Nebraska um, be looking for Kingston Chain. Uh, you have to, do you need to change your name, your hometown, to Hawaii for the PRCA? Hawaii. Well, it is my hometown, but I don't know. Right now I've lived in Dodge City about the same time I have lived in Hawaii. I don't know. I, I could change it, I guess. But. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. My, my friend is from Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's cool. <laughs> well, part Hawaii of Hawaii connection. Part of it is I just don't want. To, not that I want to talk about it. It's just like that. Every time you mention Hawaii, everybody's like, "Oh my God!" And they have a thousand questions about Hawaii and, and all that. Do you like being in America? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, no. But anyways, I think that this is uh, wrapping up our first blog or podcast one. or something like that. So yeah. I, hope, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this and I hope that you've stuck it out this far. Um, obviously, we would like to know what we could do better. What, you know, give us some feedback right here. Um, as like I said, this is our first time. I appreciate my bro Chang being Thank on the you, mic bro. with really me. really appreciate uh, it. He did a very very good talker very very good talker i'm impressed so um you know get in front of a camera and obviously we like we have we have people behind us here they've been tuned in this whole time so a lot of this that a lot of this that he's talked to like i just learned for the first time you know mm -hmm. um so you guys have got a full glimpse of kingston chain right here and, and just a gif you know it's hard hard to fit everything into a 30 30 minute video sure, or whatever sure. but um you guys don't know chang Man, he's a stand-up guy. He's a really, really good healer. Um, look forward to see you at the, the circuit finals here in the fall. So, so give her hell. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we said we get JC out of bed and spin me some steers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much.